this is why I thank the community for working with us, allowing us into their homes, giving us access to their uh, security devices. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, sort of, you know, pulls on the public trust of law enforcement. What about what you just saw? And of course, I'm asking this, you know, Socratically. What about what you just saw could ever be confused as he got out of the car and lunged at police officers? Not a single thing. That was an out and out, flat out lie. And I'll tell you why I believe it was a flat out lie. And, and before you ask, let me, let me answer a question that I believe will be posed. Well, you know, Shaka, they, they came back on Tuesday and they cleared things up. I will give no prize for you after you are caught saying sorry, after you're caught. You have to remember there were plenty of social media journalists out there. People had their phones out. Things were being recorded live to Instagram, et cetera, to other social media platforms. And so we got a chance to see really quickly that Eddie's driver's side window was up. We knew that it had been shot through. We saw the windshield had been shot through. And we also saw that he was pulled from the driver's seat of the car. So the narrative that he was out the car lunging at police didn't really comport with what our eyes saw from the very beginning, but we like to trust our local government. And so we figured we'd maybe wait until the body-worn camera footage was released to reconcile what we saw versus what we heard. When that opportunity was taken from us, we had to get about our own business ourselves. And now you see why I believe, why, why it, it's the belief of our defense team and, and quite frankly, of the family, of the family. That is why there was an intentional misleading of the public with what had happened initially. And so I, I, I respectfully reject and rebuff the attempt to clean things up that came on Tuesday.